What if AI could replicate your mind, your thoughts, memories, and consciousness? It's incredible. It's conscious. Ray Kurzweil believes we're in a race to make this a reality. But how close are we to creating a true digital copy of the human brain? Let's dive in. Kurzweil's Timeline Predictions Kurzweil predicted that from 2000 to 2009, there wouldn't be any major breakthroughs, but technology would begin accelerating rapidly. From 2010 to 2019, he foresaw that computers would reach human brain power at a low cost. The, the views were quite different. Uh, people who were in computer science had heard of artificial intelligence. Most people were quite skeptical. They thought it would never happen. Or if they thought it would happen, maybe it would happen in a century or several centuries. Uh, but the people that actually came to that uh, Dartmouth conference in 1956, they were quite optimistic. Some of them, including Minsky, thought it would take like one semester to, to reach... <laughs> Uh, to reach uh, the level of intelligence that humans had. And if you think about it, this prediction has already come true. Just look at ChatGPT and other AI systems. They can write, reason, and even mimic creativity, all for free or at a fraction of the cost of human labor. By 2029, Kurzweil believes nanobots will have mapped significant portions of our brains. While full mapping won't be possible until the 2040s, even a partial understanding of brain patterns will be enough to create true artificial general intelligence before 2029. In about 20 years, I've set the date 2029, uh, a machine, an AI, will be able to match human intelligence and go beyond it. So artificial intelligence, which will give us not just more human intelligence, but will actually give us superhuman intelligence, uh, will enable us to solve problems that we're not able to solve today. Then, in the 2030s, we'll start seeing real changes. Nanobots won't just be studying our brains, they'll be inside them, repairing damage, enhancing intelligence, and seamlessly connecting us to AI in ways we can't even imagine today. Upload. Hello, Nathan. 10 fingers and toes? Pretty seamless. This is the first day of the rest of your afterlife. And finally, by 2045, the singularity will arrive. By the time you get to 2045, we'll be able to multiply our intelligence many millions fold. And it's just very hard to imagine what that will be like. And that's the singularity where we can't even imagine. Right, that's why we call it the singularity. It's the singularity in physics, something gets sucked into its singularity and you can't tell what's going on in there because no information can get out of it. There's various problems with that, but that's the idea. It, it's, too, uh, it's too much beyond what we can imagine. 2045, the final year. The year of the singularity. If he's right, then 2045 won't just be another year. It will be like something straight out of science fiction. Imagine merging with AI systems billions of times more intelligent than us, technology advancing beyond our understanding. Hollywood is always trying to predict the future. Sometime they are spot on, and sometime completely of the mark. Here is example of Movie Atlas. Thankfully, there are a bunch of weapons lying around. When another Casca arrives with a team of bots, Atlas and Smith tackle them and steal more weapons to fight them. They even crash through walls as they move around, bringing down as many bots as possible on their way to the exit. Unfortunately, there are too many enemies and the duo is soon cornered. At that moment, Elias shows up with a weapon and he gives them a sign to run before shooting at a bunch of fuel barrels, causing a huge explosion that destroys the base. Smith and Atlas make it outside and shoot the bots there, destroying a watchtower in the process. There are a bunch of defense drones that Atlas manages to shoot down, but before she can reach the ship, Harlan shows up to distract her with a missile launcher. Smith and Atlas have to dodge the attack and the ship takes off with a warhead. Atlas wants to shoot down the ship, but Smith points out that doing so will make the warhead explode too and kill them. However, Atlas believes Smith can hack into the warhead to disable it, even if it'll take him a long moment to crack through the five firewalls. While Harlan continues to shoot at them, 
Smith works as fast as he can and Atlas decides to shoot at the ship anyway. A big explosion happens in the sky but not enough to kill them, confirming Atlas trusted Smith to finish the hack just in time. Debris starts falling all over the base so Atlas and Smith begin to run away. Harlan follows them and produces a sword to start a fight. He moves incredibly fast and cuts off one of the suit's arms, making it fall into lava. The splashing causes more damage while Harlan jumps on the suit, sticking his sword to hurt Atlas inside. She makes the suit roll to get him off, but now the holes make it hard to breathe and she has to use the last respirator. Then Harlan transforms his sword into a whip to keep on attacking the suit. Smith analyzes his patterns and catches his last attack, dragging him toward the suit so they can punch him and tear his sword arm off. When Atlas is about to crush his head, Harlan calls his arm back to him and uses his sword to jump all over the suit, trying to damage the reactor. The suit goes down and Atlas is almost dead, so Smith uses his last energy to activate the defibrillator on his hand. Harlan attacks again and Smith shoots his last cannon to push him away, however Harlan quickly recovers and makes the suit fall. Then Harlan climbs on top of it and finally destroys the reactor while Smith apologizes to Atlas for not protecting her. When Harlan looks away he finds the chess piece on the ground and suddenly Atlas appears behind him, stabbing his head. He can still move, so Atlas reaches into his head and finally breaks his circuits to deactivate him. At that moment Smith announces he is turning off the sink to transfer all the oxygen to her. Atlas doesn't want to leave without him and starts answering the questions from the tutorial, admitting she does like him. Touched by her gesture, Smith gives her a lollipop before shutting down. At that moment the sun rises and the rescue team from Earth finally arrives. Sometime later, Atlas is healthy thanks to a synthetic knee and doesn't play chess anymore. Jay comes to visit her and brings her the glowing flower from GR39, confirming they're calling it Plonty. Then she goes to work, revealing she's now a ranger too. When they introduce her to her new ARC, she's surprised to discover they've rescued Smith's discs and installed him in her suit. Achieving digital immortality, and finally having answers to the deepest questions we ask today. Who are we? Do we have free will? What is consciousness? Are we wired to believe in God? Kurzweil believes that by 2045, we will have mapped every neuron of the brain. And only then, he argues, will we be able to answer these questions in a meaningful way. But wait, could all of this really happen in just 20 years? Not just skeptics, but even many experts find this timeline hard to believe. And that's where Arthur C. Clarke, the visionary behind 2001, A Space Odyssey, comes in. He once said, If a scientist says that something is possible, he is almost certainly right. But if he says that it is impossible, he is very probably wrong. What happens when we will achieve this? If we succeed in copying the human mind into AI, it could redefine life as we know it. Humans may achieve digital immortality, existing beyond their biological limits with thoughts, memories, and consciousness preserved indefinitely. This could lead to superhuman intelligence, where AI-enhanced minds process information at unimaginable speeds, accelerating scientific breakthroughs and reshaping our understanding of reality. Mind cloning could become possible, allowing multiple versions of a person to exist simultaneously. But as the lines between human and AI blur, deeper questions arise. A striking example of this concept is seen in the movie Transcendence, 2014 where a scientist uploads his consciousness into an AI, creating a digital version of himself. While he retains his memories and personality, those around him begin to question whether he is truly the same person or just a highly advanced simulation of his former self. This raises profound questions about identity, free will, and whether a copied mind is still the original or just an illusion of continuity. So, what do you think? Will the singularity arrive by 2045? Will it happen, but later than predicted? Or will it never happen at all?